is the year 2007. A family has moved into a new home. The daughter stumbles upon a book-like diary, and when she opens it, she finds it to be the journal of Ernest Rutherford. The journal shows a detailed explanation of the famous gold foil experiment written by Ernest Rutherford himself. Who is Ernest Rutherford? And what was the gold foil experiment? As the girl begins reading through Rutherford's notes and thoughts, she begins to imagine the whole scenario taking place. Marston, Keeger, I've come up with the right idea that's mind-boggling. Come on, don't you stand there? Let's go. In case you're wondering, Hans Geiger to your left and Ernest Marsden to your right are two chemists that work with Rutherford. Uh, so I was just thinking, the whole point of the experiment was to evaluate the effects of alpha particles on matter. So why don't we try aiming beams of alpha particles at a piece of gold foil in which I shall call the gold leaf. Ah, that's as good as gold. <laughs> See what I did there, lads? I, it, it, I can't believe how you work in such a serious environment, but you still act like a child. Uh, I beg to differ. That's complete nonsense. If anything, I'm the brains of this experiment. I, that's it! I'm tired of your constant argumentative nonsense. Stop bickering! Now that that's been taken care of, stop willy wagging around. Let's decide how exactly we're going to do this. No. Okay, men. As you know, we've had many problems with our with scattered particles. Exposure from our latest experiment, radon-222. The radioactive gas that was produced when the element radon decays. The particles were led by a vacuum, and after hitting the gold foil, they scattered in most, almost all directions. Yes, yes, I remember that. The scatters were seen as small flashes of light when we analyzed the patterns using a microscope and electroscope that could only be rotated around the foil. I also remember that experiment. It was when Giger decided that gold isn't as good as aluminum. I beg your pardon. I was not blabbering, Marsden. I was simply emphasizing on the point that aluminum foil is overrated and wouldn't be as effective and, condu and conductive as gold. Yes, yes, I'm so sorry, Your Highness. I didn't mean to offend you. Yeah, well, that was one rough experiment. But then I developed the Giger counter so that we could conduct our observations in normal light. Yes, and then we found out that an alpha particle scattering was only was only one or two degrees. However, a deflect however a few deflected at a great angles. We also found out that alpha particles carry a double positive charge, so they are electri electrically repelled from the highly positive ch charged gold nucleus. All I remember is most of the particles that were flung around were positive and not negative, unlike somebody we know. Uh, pardon me, do you not see how I'm being treated here? I'm gobsmacked of how you always believe that I truly mean what I say. I have nothing on you, nothing big. Well, you two dirty sobs just quit it! Sheesh! No one wants to hear your obnoxious, just dirty little children always arguing. Get it straight! You duh! I'm so sorry for my rudeness. Um, yeah, it's cool, bro. <laughs> Is you mad? Or nah? <laughs> Pardon? Okay, about that nucleus, though. Oh, yes, right, right. As I say, wait, how are you talking to me? There's no girls in here. I'm just fabulous like that. Plus, technically, you weren't really in a room with me. You're just a figment of my imagination. Since, you know, you're dead. Ah, I see. Moving on. I'm um, moving on as we were discussing. In 1910, Rutherford and his co-workers were studying the angles at which alpha particles were scattered as they passed through a thin gold foil. Most of the alpha particles passed through undeflected. However, a few were found to be scattered at large angles, some even back in the direction from which they had come. This meant that they had collided with an object much more massive than the alpha particles themselves, yet so small that only a few alpha particles encountered them. This atomic level view shows what is happening. Most of the atom is occupied by the low mass electrons. The nucleus is small and massive. When an alpha particle encounters a nucleus, it is scattered at a large angle. And the scattered particles occurred when the alpha particles came near the nucleus. Exactly. And so the reason the most and the reason that most of the A particles were not scattered at all was because they were passing through the large gaps between the nuclei. Rutherford yeah. revised Thompson's plum pudding model, showing how electrons could orbit a positively charged nucleus, like planets orbiting a sun.
In 1915, Niels Bohr adapted Rutherford's model by saying that the orbits of the electrons were quantized, meaning that they could only exist at certain distances from the nucleus. Wow. Rutherford was some guy. He is such an inspiration. He was so brave and smart to be able to conduct such an, an experiment. He is truly the father of nuclear physics. Too bad I'll never read this old thing again. Ugh, it's such a bore. Oh well. Oh, Mom, is that spaghetti? Go. It's oh, yours! It's mine! I was go! Just go, Jane! Okay. Shut up, Jane, turn it <laughs> off, great. <laughs> Oh, y'all, I gotta go soon. Go. Like, my mom's yeah, waiting okay. for me. Like, come on. Alright, y'all. My mom's it. coming. Just <laughs>